Yo, what is up everybody? So today we're gonna be optimizing our keyboard and mouse for the best low input lag settings. We're gonna be covering mouse software, keyboard software, and in-game options and settings to improve input lag and to improve responsiveness for your mouse and keyboard. We're also going to be covering the best USB ports that you should be using on your motherboard. For Intel and for Ryzen, this is different, but we'll be covering that later. So without further ado, let's get right into the basic mouse optimizations. All right, so we're going to go to our Windows settings, Windows key and I to open up really quickly. All right, so we're going to head over to devices. We're going to click mouse on the left. We're going to click additional mouse options. And you basically want to go to pointer options, uncheck enhanced pointer precision. This is mouse acceleration within windows you really don't want this you really want mouse sensitivity that you should be using select pointer speed you want to set this on the six tick so you want to press on your keyboard the right arrow key five times so one two three four five it should be in the middle and then press apply and then press ok all right so once you've done that we're gonna head over back to home we're gonna head over to the system and under display scale and layout now, if you are on a 4K monitor, this, should, this will be a lot higher. So in that situation, we're going to be applying Mark C Mouse Fix, which is a fix and to completely stop mouse acceleration within Windows. And just take note of this value right here. Scale and layout percentage and head over to the links in the description. I'll be leaving the link to the folder that has all the mouse fixes in it. So once you have it, extract the file and open it and you're basically going to be met up with this screen just ignore everything just go to windows 10 fixes and basically just look for the percentage you're on for example i'm on 100 percent i'm going to be double clicking 100 percent and pressing yes and pressing ok if you're on 250 percent you're going to double click 250 percent if you're on anything in between you click that and that's that for this step now this is basically the basic optimizations for your mouse you don't need to do anything else there is something called keyboard repeat and short delay however this has no effect on the actual input lag of the keyboard in the game. So now we're going to head over to the mouse software and keyboard software. All right, so I own a Razer mouse, so I'm going to be using the Razer Synapse. If you own a Logitech mouse, I'll be leaving a screenshot of what you should use. It's called a program called Onboard Memory Manager. And if you have Onboard Memory on your mouse, you'll be able to use this program. And you basically just change the settings in there. That's about to do. Just follow the settings that I do here or just follow the screenshot I'll be leaving. Just follow that. And you basically never have to touch your mouse settings ever again because it automatically saves it to the memory on the mouse. Especially if you're on a G Pro, I'd highly recommend doing this. So I'm on a Razer, so I'm going to click Razer Viper Mini. That's what I have. Ignore all this. This is all personal preference. You want to head over to performance and it should be like this on default. You want to turn off sensitivity stages. The higher you increase your DPI, the lower input lag you will have within your mouse and there will be less sensor smoothing. So basically, if you're on 400 DPI, you do not want to be using that anymore. So you want to be using 800 or even 1600 for most of you is probably the sweet spot. And usually 3200 or above, you, there's not any difference. So the max you would go for is 3200, but 1600 is perfectly fine or 800. And then you just drop your sensitivity in game to for example, if your sensitivity was 2 in-game, you drop it to however much you increase the DPI for. So, for example, if you have 400 DPI and you increase it to 1600, you multiply 400 DPI by 4. So, you divide your in-game sensitivity by 4 and use that as a new sense. It should still feel the same in-game, just a lot smoother and better in lag. I'm going to be setting it to 1600. I really want to try that out, so I'm going to be using that. And we're going to go over to Lightning. You do not want any RGB on your peripherals. RGB increases power draw, and your USB ports aren't necessarily meant to draw more power. So you want to turn off RGB. You'll most likely feel a difference just with the RGB being turned off. So that's that for Razer Synapse. You can honestly uninstall this because my mouse, in fact, does have onboard memory, so I've already changed the settings in Razer, so now I can uninstall it and it'll completely save on my mouse. I won't have to go into Synapse ever again. So now we're gonna head over to the keyboard. I have an Apex Pro keyboard. So these settings should be kind of universal. You wanna head over to Engine, you wanna click your Apex Pro TKL configuration. And Actuation, obviously drop this all the way down. And if you want it higher, you want it higher, but dropping it all the way down is the lowest input lag. You have to get used to it. Illumination, same thing base effect off takes more power to draw and you do not want more power draw and rgb just causes input like oled and settings there isn't a way to actually turn this off so we'll keep it at this and then we'll just press save 
and exit out of this. And matter of fact, you could completely uninstall Studio Series because the Apex Pro does have onboard memory. We'll be uninstalling those right now. Do not need them at all. So we're gonna scroll down, find Razer Synapse. I'm gonna be uninstalling that. And I'll be right back after I've uninstalled both of these. All right, so now we're gonna be heading over to the USB ports. And basically for Intel, I'll leave a picture above or where, of where you should plug it in, but you should just plug it in at the top of the back of your PC, which is gonna be the top of the motherboard. Right next to the PS2 ports, if you have those, plug them there. Same thing goes for controller or mouse and keyboard. So for Ryzen, this is a different situation because there's a CPU USB controller and there's a chipset USB controller. Chipset USB controller, you can use that for your phone or devices that aren't latency sensitive. For mouse and keyboard, you want those on your CPU USB controller because that's faster. So I'm on a B450 motherboard, Tomahawk Max. So I'll be using the manual to find out which ports are my CPU USB controller. So be down in the English version and basically if you know your motherboard you can use the manual sometimes it shows it sometimes it not but for my motherboard specifically it does show it so we're gonna be using these bookmarks we're gonna go to the rear IO panel and as you can see it shows all the parts that I have on this motherboard so as you can see MSI does in fact show a diagram of where you should plug in the mouse and keyboard for my motherboard and it's obviously right under the PS2 ports, which I am using currently for both my mouse and my keyboard. Now, specifically for the Apex Pro, you do not need both of the cables. One of the cables is actually to power the USB port on the keyboard. So if you do not use that USB port on the keyboard, you could unplug one of the cables and you should be fine with just one of the cables for the Apex Pro. If you need to do that to fit in the keyboard and mouse into the best ports then go ahead and do that but another way of figuring out where your usb ports are is heading over to device manager and we're basically going to click view at the top click devices by connection and scroll down and the usb controller that's at the top is the cpu usb controller so for example this is my usb controller that's on the cpu and this bottom one is on the chipset so as you can see i have my mouse and keyboard on the cpu and my headset and on the chipset USB controller, I have my Wi-Fi. So you could do this and you could figure out which ports are actually the best ports for your Ryzen CPU that are the least sensitive. So you'd keep unplugging them and seeing where each device ends up. Now, obviously you'd have to figure out which one of these are actually your mouse or keyboard. Just unplug it and see which one disappears or if it has the name, then that's that. So that's pretty much it on finding the best USB ports for your mouse and keyboard. And now we're gonna exit out of this. I'm gonna be showing you some in-game options that you should turn off for the best input lag. So we're gonna head over to Discord. A lot of you have this installed. So you want to head over to your setting and then you want to head over to advanced and you want to uncheck hardware acceleration and turn this off. You do not want this on. Same thing with game overlay, especially the game overlay. It causes a lot of input lag and some FPS drops. That's for discord. Now, every game out there, you want to run all low settings. You want to turn off anti-aliasing. You want to turn off all these settings. That's if you want the best input lag. If you want the best visuals, then I wouldn't really do that the games that you want the best visuals in, you don't really need the best input lag in except probably warzone but there is a way to make warzone look better while also having the best performance and that's in my last video so if you want to check that out you could go ahead and check that out but in terms of mouse and keyboard optimization we are all done and our mouse and keyboard should be running flawlessly now so one last optimization that we're going to do to our game exe files is disabling full screen optimizations now if you care about alt tabbing quickly then do not do this tweak because it'll cause a black screen depending on your monitor but me personally i care about the game more than alt tabbing so I'm going to be showing you guys how to find your game exe and how to disable full screen optimizations we'll disable full screen optimizations first for call of duty so the way to find your game exe file is to open up a launcher open up your game and you want to open up your task manager and just find the game exe for example it should be call of duty hq i'll open that file location and as you can see it's cod.exe so i'll right click that click properties head over to compatibility and check disable full screen optimizations and also check override high DPI scaling behavior. Press OK, press apply, and press OK. And you basically wanna do this for every competitive game that you have for Fortnite, for Valorant, for Apex Legends. You should do it for most of your games that are esports related and you want the best competitive advantage in. 
one last tip that I'll recommend for in-game settings is you want to cap your frame rate as something that is stable because instability within frame rates will cause some type of input lag within your mouse or your keyboard. So for example, if you're getting about 240 frames on Unlimited and Fortnite, then you'd cap it at 240 frames because that's what you get 95% of the time. Same thing goes for Valorant. If you get 240 frames most of the time, you'd cap it at 240 frames. Now, there is ways to go above 240 frames, which is by multiplying your refresh rate by two and capping at that. So for example, I have a 144 hertz monitor and I know I get 288 stable frame rate in Valorant on my PC. So I just cap it at 288 because that's a multiple of my refresh rate. Now you could also do, you could also divide your refresh rate by two and do that and so on and so forth. So for example, if you have 240 hertz, but you're not really reaching 240 in a game, divide 240 by two and you'll get 120. So if you get 120 stable in a game like Warzone, you cap it at 120 and it should help a ton with smoothness and mouse feel. Now we're all done with optimizing our mouse and keyboard, but if you want even less input lag, I'd recommend getting my service because I go through things in BIOS and I go through things in Windows that I haven't mentioned in any of my videos. And if you really want that competitive advantage, I'd highly recommend booking one of my services. And we basically go through your BIOS settings, which is your motherboard settings, and we optimize every single thing. There isn't any overclocking involved unless you pick the GPU overclocking add-on within my advanced PC optimization service. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.